Hi guys, welcome to Ask Abby, questions for the Queen of Construction. Be warned, my advice may be free, but my taste is very expensive. Um, today we are talking hallways and how to make them functional and fabulous. First of all, let me apologise for the fact that A, it's really echoey and um, you can see my electricity box. I just realised that as I've turned this on. So uh, you're just going to allow me that, aren't you? You're going to allow me that. That's no problem. Um, and I'm going to stream some uh, images. Hi, Doink. Lovely to see you. Um, I'm going to stream some images because I'm going to show you some of the hallways that when I did a cursory look at uh, what good hallways are. This is what Google gives you when you look at a good hallway. Um, it's totally, I mean, it's inspirational, right? It's beautiful, it's Instagrammable, but it's not livable. Like seriously, look at it. There's, there's no detritus of life. Where do people put their things? These hallways to me look like the kind of spaces that, I don't know, you have a full team of staff to clear your hallway. And honestly, if you had a full team of staff, I kind of expect you to have a better hallway than that, you know? Just nothing, no storage, nothing. Um, this whole thing, literally, I call this bullshit beauty. I really do, because it's just, it's not practical. Beautiful, yes, but it's just utter bullshit. So. We're going to start right at the beginning. Hallways, for me, is anywhere that you come into your house. Okay, ideally you have a room. It could be a vestibule, it could be an entranceway, it could be a corridor. Um, but if you come into your house, you normally come straight into your kitchen. For the sake of this, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about hallways. So you're just going to go with me. Um, and I, I have some notes, very technical what we're going to be talking about today. Schedule and organise the fun, right? Um, and I'm going to start with some practicalities. So we're talking function, queen construction, we're always going to be talking function. I'm not the Duchess of Design, by which I mean, I presume you have a personality and taste. So I don't think I'm going to be telling you this is the colour of blue that you should paint your hallway or this is the wallpaper that you should have. I consider that you've got enough about you to choose the aesthetic. I'm talking about the function which the aesthetic is going to be built off. Because um, that's what you get from me, right? So let's start at the beginning and I'm going to get you engaged. Um, and I would love you to be mentally part of this, even if you aren't in your own hallway right now. So if you can picture being in your hallway and the first thing I want you to do is turn around and look at your front door. Um, and we're going to start off by talking about security. So. Did you know that your home insurance tells you the kind of lock you're supposed to have on your front door? Often it's a five point mortise lock and the mortise lock, that's that, the one with the key down here. You have, I haven't got a key to show you, the key goes in. It's not this latch. It's not this latch, it's the key at the front and the back. Now, this is very important. If your insurance says for you to have this kind of lock and you don't, and your house gets broken into, your insurance may be null and void. I've had this with a client. They lost almost £10,000. Um, to find out what kind of lock you have, I wouldn't expect you to know. It's very, very simple. And I know you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to show you where it is. If you look on the side here, this is in the, this is the timber door. So the five uh, point mortise lock is in here. And it actually says the words five lever. And that's what we're looking for. We're also looking for a kite mark. It's like a heart. It's a heart with some writing in it and it's got a BS and then a number after it. So that's what we're looking for. I'm just going to screw that back onto my door. Um, first things first, that's what you're looking for. It is worth checking this because there's no point doing anything in your hallway if it's not secure because that's the most important thing that we're looking for. Um, second thing, if your front door has got glazing like mine, we were all thinking about energy bills. It's in the news today, how much energy is. Glazing in a front door is like wearing a t-shirt in winter. You may look good, but you're gonna be cold because often the glazing in front door is single glazing or it's not particularly efficient. 
So if you have a front door that's got glazing or you think you've got a bit of a drafty front door, there are some things that you can do. Queen Construction says, get your front door replaced. Get it replaced. Pay for it to be done properly, have a good front door with the proper kind of lock that you need, thermally insulated, draft control systems and all of the gaps. That's the best fix that you've got. If you haven't got the resource to do that right now for this winter, there's two things. First of all, I'm going to tell you a hack to show you how drafty your door is. And then second of all, I'll tell you what the solution is. So the first hack involves a candle. And I'm not talking you fancy people who've got diptyque candles, you know, lovely little ones in a jar. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about this kind of candle. So this is obviously not something to do with a child around. If you light this candle, at any time of the day, hold it near the door. If you've got drafts coming through from your mortise lock, from the gaps at the side, perhaps from your letterbox, you may even find it around the glazing, you'll see it on the flame because flames are very, very sensitive to drafts. So that's a really, really good hack to see if you've actually got drafts coming through your front door. Um, alternatively, you may literally hear the wind whistle through your front door, in which case it's definitely drafty and it needs to be solved. As I said, if you haven't got the resource and the budget to um, change your front door right now, and I completely understand that, what I use, I literally have got this out of my cupboard, this, if you can see it, is an extendable curtain pole and I use this during the winter months you can see I extend it into space it's got little things I got it off Amazon it cost a tenner um, and what I do is I put that up and it allows me to have a curtain over the drafts if we think about what Victorians did because Victorians like us wanted warm houses and Victorians like us struggled to heat our houses like most of the housing stock in the UK Victorian um, they often use curtains over doors and windows because it's actually a really, really clever thing to do. So that's really, really good practical first thing, bit of security, bit of thermal management. Um, next, I'm going to be talking about your surfaces. I'm going to start with the floor. You can't see in here, but just trust me, it's got some fabulous travertine. Um, it needs to be a hard surface. Do you know how much dirt is traipsed into your house? every single time that you come in, every single time that the door is opened. Um, you need to have a non-porous uh, surface that can be cleaned. The only exception to that is a mat well. Um, a mat well is where your mat is set into whatever hard surface you've got. It can be timber, it can be stone, it can be tiles. Um, a mat well is just a civilised way of making sure your mat and your other surface is completely flush with each other. If you don't know how to do it, speak to your flooring contractor, they'll be able to do it really easily. And it's just how civilised people have their mats, just in case you want to you know advice from the Queen of Construction. Um, now, we talked about the floor being hard wearing. We need to think about the walls being the same. I am someone who has no children. It's just myself and my husband. We come into the hallway. We've got this fancy wallpaper. And I was like, it's fine. I know that I should have a hard wearing surface. And by the way, this is quite a hard wearing, like a vinyl wallpaper. I can wash this, I can scrub this with a sponge. It still has got damage. So if you've got a household where you've got more than just two grown adults who should know better coming into your home, then I really, really, really encourage you to think about, especially at a lower level, having a gloss paint, having tongue and groove, um, having a hard wearing material, both that won't get scuffed in the first place, and if it does get marked or damaged, you can just wipe it down or really, really easily repair it. Again, when we look at the Victorians, you yeah, they, they were so practical in terms of their homework. They often had panelled or gloss paint hallways because they knew you're bringing your dirt, you're bringing your umbrella and your dog and your Ikea furniture delivery or what the hell it is that's coming in. Um, if you find that your hallway is a little bit echoey because you've got these hard surfaces and you haven't got the kind of fabrics that you're used to, a bit of a game changer is machine washable rugs google it like if you haven't heard of it, it it does what it says on the tin um they're absolutely fantastic 
And for years and years, I used to say to people, you categorically cannot have a carpet in your hallway because from a maintenance perspective, it ages very quickly, it'll get stained, it'll get marked. It's just from a maintenance, construction maintenance perspective, I just absolutely wouldn't recommend it as a material. And then suddenly washable rugs came in and I was like, oh, praise be. Because actually it's quite nice. It, it reduces the echoiness in the space, which you'll hear that I've got in here. Now we're going to talk about other things that can get knocked and damaged as you come into a hallway. And I'm afraid I can't show you. I can try and turn it. I'm going to try and turn it and show you. We're going to be interactive. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. Hello. Artwork. So hallways generally are quite small. That means anything that you've got on the wall, it, it's very, very easy for things to get knocked. And you may think I'm a very careful person. No, no, no I'm not going to knock something. Just trust me here. It's a transitional space. In transitional spaces, things get damaged. So absolutely encourage you to put things on the wall, demonstrate your personality, whatever the artwork might be. This is obligatory something to do with France because I'm basically French obsessed. So there we go. Everyone who knows me knows that's true. Um, these pictures, as you can tell, can you feel them? They're not going anywhere. The reason being they're on hooks. The reason they're on hooks, and those hooks are um, going into the wall, they're going into the wall with raw plugs, that means I've drilled into the wall to fix them in permanently. I've not used a nail, I kind of a lightweight um, pitch hanging system. The reason being, if this gets knocked, it's not going anywhere, it's not gonna fall down. Whereas if you're just using a nail, a tack, balancing the frame onto it, it's very, very easy for things to fall. And the last thing that I want you to do is have spent a load of money on some beautiful artwork, something that's really precious to you, um, and it gets damaged just by someone, you know, taking their jacket off a little bit too vigorously or, you know, whatever it is that happens in your hallway. Um, a little hint, hint and tip for you. Now into the big stuff, storage. I'm just going to turn because I was like sandwiched between a chair and the wall, not that you could see that. Um, storage is what everyone needs in a hallway. You have so many things that you store in a hallway because we all naturally do. We come in, we take our things off. Jacket, umbrellas, shoes, keys, bags, whatever it is, golf clubs, tennis clubs, whatever the hell it is that you store, you, you will end up dumping it in the hallway. And if it doesn't have a designated space, um, it will just get dumped. And when I talk about a designated space, what I mean by that is not going to Ikea and having this kind of what I call the Ikea illusion, which is you go into a space and you, an Ikea set up space. And you're like, oh, that looks really, really organized. So I'll buy that system. But what you haven't done is ask yourself first, what is it that I need? So is it that I have tennis rackets and a golf set of golf clubs? That's the thing that I struggle for. Right, so that's what you need to design storage for. I've run into people's homes and I've seen all of these wonderful shoe box storage in hallways. Fabulous. They're basically empty and they've got coats, coats, coats galore hanging up because actually what they need is storage for their coats, their shoes, they're kind of in the system of putting them away. So my preference is that you work with a joinery company and you have something custom made for you. Hallways are small, you generally need something that is custom made. And if you tell them the problem that you're trying to solve, they will help you. And I love Charlotte because you have asked exactly the next point that I was gonna raise, which is, Seating. You absolutely, you may think you don't need a seat in your hallway. You categorically do. My favourite kind of seat is a bench seat because you have storage underneath it and basically like a boss, you've got it hidden in there and you don't even know. I personally, I just have a dining chair. I have a dining chair in my hallway because it's my spare dining chair and that's where it lives. I used to think that I didn't need to use it because I'm so young and nimble you need a chair, you genuinely need a chair in your hallway. Um, and I'm gonna finish off this reel today with some inspirational images where you can see some of the uh, designed, what I think is a good designed hallway. And I think there'll be some nice inspo in there for you. Um, other things, just to cover off, this is now getting a little bit more into less from practical construction and more into some advice. Um, absolutely have stands for things like umbrellas. I know it's, it's 30 degrees or something right now, so kind of can't imagine using an umbrella, but we do come in with them, they're wet, they need to be put somewhere, ideally somewhere that's got a tray, a drip tray that can catch those drips. 
Um, beware of surfaces, uh, beware of a surface where you could put your keys because people can look through your letterbox and see your keys and try and hook them. So try and make sure things are either in drawers or away or completely out of the hallway. Um, talking about electrics, just coming on to, and I'm going to turn this so you can see. Um, when you are having your hallway up upgraded, I like to have functional lighting, which is this kind of lighting here. I have a mirror in front of me here. It means I can see myself properly, no matter the day or night, really functional lighting. I also have a lamp, because it's pretty, and it's quite nice not to have really, really bright lamps all the time. There's no way that I'm going to be faffing around with a switch, so I have that wired onto something called a five amp socket. And what that means is it's a socket on the wall, no different from your 13 amp. 13 amp is your three pins and they're rectangular shaped. Five amp is three pins and they're round. And all it is is a circuit that's linked to a switch. And that's really good. And you know what, that's, that's good for the whole house. So if you're redoing your wiring, talk to your electrician and say, sometimes can I control my lamps? with my switches and if you don't know what you're talking about get a better better electrician if while you're doing wiring you want to think about some security um, i'm a really big fan of um, ring doorbells now they can be controlled purely by wi-fi and battery alone but if you are putting new cabling in my suggestion is worth putting a hard wire cable power cable um, to your front door you don't need data necessarily because it will work off your home wi-fi but your hardline cable will mean that you don't have to worry about replacing the batteries. It's just hardwired in. Um, uh, so we talked about surfaces. We talked about security. Ring doorbells are really good. If you don't have a ring doorbell, think about a peephole. If you have got a solid door, just so you know what you're doing. Um, and then last but not least, the concept of an airlock. Right now, I'm in actually what is an open plan hallway. I turn it, you can see it goes into my living room there um, and what happens is if this space is cooler than the space it's next to the living room sorry this is basic I always feel like I'm kind of Pippa Middleton you know sandwiches should go on plates kind of obvious statement but the hot air will be drawn into the cooler area if you've got that in your hallway either put a door or a curtain over it we just need to create an, an airlock between your front door and the rest of the house think about a restaurant how many restaurants have you been to where the front it opens and it's kind of like all the cold air rushes in? Often they put a vestibule on and it's to create that airlock. Um, if you like to maintain this aesthetic, put a glass door. Have something fabulous and critical. Who isn't at the moment? Um, so I'm going to show you some what I think is good design and I'm going to get a little summary of what we've covered. Uh, and then if anyone's got any questions, feel free to put them on while we're doing this. And here are some beautiful images of storage. And you can see there's a little bench there. I love that. Concealed storage. This is a bespoke joinery. So someone there has concealed something in. Again, this is customised. You see it's got the bench. Missed opportunity, I think. They could have put some storage under there. This is more, slightly more off the shelf. So this is something that you could buy in Ikea. These are exactly the Ikea shoe holders. If you don't know these, they're quite practical. This look is fantastic. Uh, this is really, really a solid practical look. Here's something slightly more contemporary. Again, you've got seating and you've got the storage there. You'll see a theme constantly. Um, even with these, some of these are quite visually cluttered. If you are looking for something that's more minimalist, speak to your joiner because they'll be able to come up with an aesthetic where the cupboards are quite quiet and it allows your artwork or whatever it may be um, to take the feature. So it can be really contemporary like this. This is a hallway. Um, and you can really have a little bit of fun with it, right? This is where your personality and your taste comes in. That's not for me to tell you anything. Um, so hallways, absolutely very, very hard working spaces, transitional spaces. Um, don't be blindsided by basic, um, by be beauty bullshit. So I'm trying to do two things at once. Don't be blindsided by beauty bullshit, by these magazines, by Instagram, by Pinterest, which is showing you these empty hallways. People are not living in those spaces, that's not realistic. Think security, think about your front door, think about your insurance, check. Just check on the side, just open your door, have a look, see what it says. Um, think about thermal, um, thermal performance and draft reduction. Oh, I know, it's 30 degrees right now, it's insane to even be thinking about thermal performance, but energy bills are a real thing, the costs are going up. 
these little things, they can be taking 10 quid off a week. You know, that's the kind of energy wastage that you can be getting from that. Practicalities, hard flooring, hard wearing wall surfaces. Um, five amps for your low level, that's your little three pin sockets that are controlled by your plug on, um, by your switch on the wall. That's really practical. Um, secure your art with proper fixings. Create storage which meets your needs, particularly you and your family's needs. Um, watch out for surfaces and anything that you leave on the surfaces from a security perspective. perspective. Include a seat and then design away to your heart's content. And uh, most importantly, share the photos with me of what you've done. Um, listen, these are some of the things that I've talked about today are some of the things I think about when I'm doing a residence report for my clients and when I'm working as a client advisor. Um, because we all get overwhelmed by the beauty and the aesthetic of the space, but often we aren't thinking about practicalities like security, building regulations, insurance, wiring. Um, and that's really where I come in. That's, that's why they call me the Queen of Construction, um, as opposed to the Duchess of Design, which apparently is a new phrase that I've come up with, which I kind of want to be, but I don't feel qualified to. Um, and Rachel, I think you have a very good, you have a very good front hall. So Rachel's saying she's rethinking, but if I've inspired you to do anything, I'd love to hear more about it. Um, for more details on anything that I've spoken about, I'm going to be posting stuff on Instagram and you can always find more information about me and what I do on um, abigailhall.design, which is my website. Thank you guys for doing my second Instagram live. Oh, oh my God, I'm going to have a bit of a sit down. Thank you. Um, and feel free to DM me or uh, reply to this post if you've got any questions. Thanks guys. Bye.